Uh, I'm Austin Axley. I'm the Western Canadian Territory Manager for Intelligent Ag. For, I'm Alberta and BC. And then we have a second guy, Alan McDonald, for Saskatchewan and Manitoba. I'm here today to talk about our recon blockage monitor. I've been with the company now for two years, and I've also been farming my whole life. Not that I'm that old, but enough to, tough to know what I'm talking about. Let's all uh, start off by looking at these pictures. We've all done it. We've all missed pieces in our field, strips, left strips. I mean, we, we've all done it, whether it's for many of these reasons here or, or we just forget to check or anything like that. And it always seems to happen right in front of the busiest highway so all your neighbors can see it. So the first thing we got to do when it comes to stuff like this is we got to understand why it's happening. Here's a list of things on the screen already, but I mean there's many more. Whether you're seeding into bad conditions, there's too much trash to clean out and you're plugging out your openers. And then even anything else really, monitoring, not distributing properly out of your tank, not metering properly, anything along those lines. But the first step to solving the problem is understanding that. So the first problem is, is when you have blockage monitors with electronics. What the problem is with electronics is it causes a lot of static from the product running through all your runs. That static then causes electrical issues, whether it's bending your pins or frying wires, kimping wires, moisture. Electronics and outdoors just don't work together too well. Another thing is, is when there is a wiring issue, trying to find one wire that's wrong in the clumps of wire, as you can see here, it's not always the easiest thing to do. The solution to that is going wireless. Best part about our sensors is the fact that they are wireless. They're all auditory, it's all based off sound. You're not trying to see it or, or anything like that, you're just hearing it. And if there's seed flowing, it's making noise. And if there isn't seed flowing, it isn't making noise. It's quite that simple. Another nice thing is having a standalone iPad display. You're not trying to share a screen on your VT with your cart or anything like that. It's a completely separate monitor, so you have live feed as to what's happening on your drill. It's reliable, it's simple, it's, the install is very simple. It's ECU, harness, sensors. It's quite, it's very easy. I've installed a lot of them and it's, it's quite, quite well and easy to be done. Basically, a quick overview as to how it works. I'll go in more depth, but our sensor has a stainless steel plate that acts as a drum skin. And as the seed bangs off of it, there's a mic microphone behind it that acts sort of like a stethoscope. And it takes that sound, transfers it into an ECU like we have here, and then transfers that sound into an electronic signal, which sends to the iPad in your cab, and you get live action feed as to what's going on on your drill within a few seconds of it happening on your toolbar or even further back in the system. This is basically what the iPad app looks like. It's a little bit different, but the same idea. At the very top, you have a mass flow number, which is an average flow across the whole drill. It takes every manifold, takes the sound, and says this, this section's flowing here, this section's flowing here, averages across, and then you're gonna get a mass flow variance, as you see up in the top right. And that's a variance from that number, and it'll be a plus minus number. And you can see that that one's yellow, because it's too far out of range, which you can change in the app. But it's nice to see that your whole drill is flowing evenly, and then once you know your drill, you can adjust those settings so that you know exactly where each manifold should be flowing in comparison to the others. Next is where claim to fame, and that's our recon blockage monitor, is more than just a blockage monitor. We can see things by based off us measuring flow, we can see things that most other blockage monitors can't because we're not just telling you if we're plugged. We can see a whole bunch of things, including our open leaking grid. We've all done it late at night, just tired when doing your last fill, forget to close the bin lid or you thought your hired man did it or whatever happened. We've all done it. I've done it. And if it doesn't pressurize the bin properly, you're not going to meter properly. And that's just a fact. Other things you can detect on the cart, product bridging in the bin. And I mean, that happens sometimes. You get wet product or poor, poor batch of fertilizer or whatever it is. If it bridges up, you're not going to be metering out properly either. Next, we're going to move further on to the toolbar. You're look, talking about your primary runs. They block too. They build up, whether they're sagging real low, not flowing properly, or they're wearing a hole in the hitch. That happened to me on my drill at home. Wore a hole. I was still getting product on my crank test, still getting product to my shanks, but I was losing flow by about 30%. Once I found that hole, swapped out that primary, and away we went. We're back into that 10, 15%, which is awesome. Other things, your manifold, they build up. You get fertilizer, seed treatment, whatever it is, they build up in your manifold and you're not getting even flow across the drill. You're gonna be able to see that. 
which is nice that we can detect that based off flow. Because if we have one section that drops down whatever 10, 15, 20 percent out of range, we know that something's going on there. Where you might still be seeding, you're still getting product, but not as much or as accurately as you'd want. And when you're precision seeding, it's what you want. And then of course, what everybody wants to know is that they're blocked at the opener. We can detect that fast. Within a few seconds, it's live feed right on the screen. You see everything you need to see. Next, we're going to talk about why it's valuable to you as a customer. And I mean, there's lots of reasons. It's reliable. It's simple. It's easy to operate. It's easy to run. Everything works. <laughs> everything just works, which is nice. Um, but as well, this year, uh, to show us as Intelligent Ag, we're growing. Over 10 years this, this year, 2021, 2011, we released our original blockage monitor, and we've grown from there, and we, we've come to be industry leading, I believe. And the reliable auditory sensing is the reason why. So to show how much we believe in our sensor, we're doing 10 year warranty for 2021 purchases on all of our auditory sensors for blockage as well as our zone, our, we're doing 10 year warranty on all of our sensors for our recon blockage as well as spread sense. To back our 10 year warranty is our exceptional service. We have a great service team. I was in service before I was sales and I mean they always take care of our customers no matter what. Uh, day and night, I've had guys call me at, at crazy hours, and you know what? It's just what you got to do to keep uh, keep everybody rolling. I know uh, farming isn't a nine to five job, so no reason that we wouldn't be nine to f that we would be nine to five. Now, some people say that they check every fill and that that's good enough. If they plug for a few acres, it's not a big deal. Well, if you really think about it, it is more than you guys might think. On our website, we have a price of block runs that we can see your savings calculator of what you'll save with our blockage monitor. So for example here, you say you're yielding 70 bushels an acre. It's well valued at $12 a bushel. This is all in US dollars. Uh, row spacing, you've got 12 inch spacing on your drill. Four openers are plugged, that's four feet. And you go for 20 miles in between a fill, back and forth, boom, boom, boom. And now you got your strips. You got a four foot strip for 20 miles. How many acres and everything it comes out to be this guy saved $8,000 just by having our blockage monitor, which, I mean, you do that twice and you've paid for it, so it's, it just makes sense. Now, as far as getting it priced out and put on your drill, the information I need here is pretty basic. So if you come after this presentation and you decide you want to reach out to your local Rocky Mountain dealer and you want to get pricing, this is the information I'll need in order to get you an accurate quote right off the bat so I can get you into the system that you want and you, you need. Now I'm going to step into talking about the guys who already have our blockage system and I want to just do a quick rundown of what I think you should do and what we suggest you do as a company before spring. This is our preseason checklist. We're going to start out with the iOS update. Every year, well, multiple times a year, Apple's going to come out with an iOS update that changes certain things inside their app. It's just the way of the world, it's what they do, it changes bugs, fixes and everything inside their app or inside their iPad. Then again, I want you to go into our app and make sure that it's updated so that we can make sure and do the changes that iOS did so that our app will work properly for you. Next on our preseason checklist is our access point, which we have three. First is our old style TP-Link, and it's the rounded corners. And then we have our new style TP-Link, which is squared and quite a bit smaller. But you want to make sure that it's powered up properly, that your inverter is working the way it should, or that your wire plugged directly into the 12 volt for the old style is all in working order. And if you updated your TP-Link this year, make sure that you get the inverter with the new style TP-Link and don't plug it directly into 12 volt with the cigarette lighter or you'll be buying another one. So one thing I also want to make sure that you check is the inverter. One thing that they do is, especially in older tractors, newer ones are quite a bit better, but Still, if they're turned on, the inverter's turned on, and you start the tractor, sometimes it'll do a power surge, and it'll actually burn out the inverter. And that's why it has a nice little switch right on the side for turning it on and off. So make sure you shut it off before you shut your tractor off, and then the next day, start your tractor, and then turn the inverter on. Just make sure that the inverter is only on when the tractor is running. And that way, you have no problems, you're never going to surge power, and it's going to operate better for you flawlessly so that you're not having to deal with stuff like that when you just want to go seeding. Our third access point is the gateway. It's actually new this year and it's basically built for the great big Borgo tow between tanks. 
and there's a lot of iron between your tractor to your toolbar by the time you put that great big tank in there. So we went to a gateway, which has just a stronger signal for better connectivity to the iPad. So that you're not messing around with losing towers or anything like that, because our the goal of us as a blockage monitor is to monitor everything, and if we can't do that, we're not doing our job. So we have this option to go out. If you have existing problems, this is something that you would do to step into to solve the problem. But, I mean, like I said, it's mostly for the new drills that we've had issues with. Next, we're going to do our power harness, which is very straightforward. The only wiring we have on the whole thing, and it's just a simple power and ground. We've got two wires loomed together, and they run from ECU to ECU, pigtailed together on a three-way switch, and they just plug, 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 and it comes into one single wire at the front of the drill, which we have a three-prong plug that you plug right into the tractor and it powers up. Works awesome. The only time I've ever seen them fail is if someone steps on the plug and breaks it, so just make sure that all your ECUs power up before you go into seeding, make sure everything connects the way it's supposed to. Give a quick visual on the harnessing, make sure that no birds have hung it down somewhere where it's gonna get caught, because I've seen that. So just make sure everything's in where it's supposed to be. When it comes to the ECUs, what I want you to do, make sure they're plugged in and the LED light is flashing at a solid one second interval. Then you know that it's operating and running properly, make sure it's plugged in, and then you should be good to go. When it comes to our sensors, I mean, there's not much really to check since they're all auditory. When you're going around checking your ECUs, make sure that the auditory tube of the sensor is plugged into the back of the ECU properly. Make sure that all the dust caps are on the unused ports so you're not getting dust or water inside of them and wrecking them. And then while you're there, make sure, you know, make sure your hose clamps are tight on your sensors. Make sure everything's looking right. I mean, they're, they're a very straightforward sensor. Next is your work switch which I get a lot of calls about this, is it's beeping at them when they turn around and then not beeping at them when they're plugged. So make sure that your work switch is put the right spot and make sure that it's inverted properly so that when it's lifted, it's shut off and when it's in the ground, it's not. It's very simple. There's two style work switches. The one on the left, we call the whisker switch and it just has a finger that actuates when it is touched to turn on or off. And the other one is a proximity switch. So when a magnet comes in proximity of the switch itself, it turns off or on, however you invert it. Another thing to do before your season starts is go into the app, make sure you understand what's going on. Again, I know after a whole year off of it, um, it definitely, it's nice to refresh your brain and check it out again and make sure that you know what's going on. So when it comes to seeding, you know exactly what you're doing. Here's a quick layout of our app. We got three main things. We got our flow rate sensitivity, which is on normal for most grains. Uh, do on low for canola, and then if you're doing something really small, say grass seed, you can go to very low. The only thing is, when you go to very low, it shuts off our section sense. So you, it'll alarm at you for sections, just because we have to go so sensitive. The way our section sense works is when 80% of a section shuts off, the section control shuts off, so it's not alarming at you. And when 20% of it comes back, it turns on. And we can't do that when it's sensing such fine stuff such as grass seed. You'll be able to tell if it's plugged and everything like the way it's supposed to, but just not be able to operate section sense. Next thing is our mass flow thresholds. That mass flow number at the top, like I told you before, is just an average across the whole drill. So when you switch from product to product, you're putting down four and a half pounds of canola. It's not gonna be making as much noise as when you're ramming down 150 pounds of fertilizer. What you wanna make sure and do is check your mass flow thresholds. Make sure they're on an appropriate number for the product you're seeding or putting down to make sure that it's doing its job and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Next is our section variance. And that number inside, that plus minus number I talked about earlier, that section variance, what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell you when it's outside of that variance, plus or minus, that it's gonna tell you so that you're not having a mess up. So when you figure out your drill and you figure out where it's gonna sit at, whether it usually sits within 15% or sits within 20%, whatever it is, you wanna make sure and open that up so that it follows that. Never have it on zero for your product thresholds as well because, I mean, you wanna know when it's starting to plug, not when she's plugged right stiff to the manifold. So make sure you can play with everything there and you can get all the information you need. The more you study this, the more you take care of it, uh, the more you're gonna get out of the blockage system and the more you're gonna have it as more than a blockage system. Here's another overlay of the app. Like I said, go through everything that you see. Make sure you understand what's going on. Make sure your configurations are correct and everything there so that when you go and hop in to actually go seeding, 
everything's ready to go. Last, if you have any other questions or, or you want more information about our recon vloggers monitor or our other products, there's guides and manuals right in the app that you can go to. Your local RME dealer is a great resource. I mean, there's lots of great guys that they have that know the product inside and out and they can take care of you as well for pricing or just questions. Our website as well has great information on it. We got videos, tutorials, uh, customer testimonials, anything like that that you want to listen to or if you have questions about it, lots of good information on our website. Again, back to our amazing service team. We have an IAS help desk, we call it, and it's just a helpline. If you've got questions when you're seating, you call, press the button so you get the right territory, leave a message if you don't get answered to, and you're gonna get answered as soon as you come in line. And that's, they're very fast, very smart. I mean, everybody on the team I know personally all, all know what they're talking about, and you'll get helped out and helped out well. And then, last but not least, we got our territory managers. I'm, of course, Alberta and BC, as I introduced. And then we have Alan McDonald, who is our territory manager for Manitoba and Saskatchewan.